Hello world, this is Lockpicking Dev. I gave you a presentation at ShellCon today showing how to make your own custom lockpicks and handles. Here's the accompanying video series with a more in-depth, step-by-step demonstration of how to make your own picks and handles. I hope this helps somebody out there, and I hope this gets more people into pick making. There are just really some truly amazing works of art out there, and I'd love to see more. If you're just getting into pick making for the first time, or you're new to woodwork, or making in general, this is for you. All possible types of tools that one could use for each step will be mentioned, as well as their pros and cons, and tips on using them. Please enjoy, and I hope that you'll see something that'll pique your interest to get you started on making your first custom lock pick. Thanks for watching. There are a lot of options to choose from when making pick handles. Some of the first ones that we usually reach for that I see and I notice is everybody's favorite, the heat shrink tube. And there are some pros and cons to that. So for instance, this one right here, these two handles, you can see this one, I have one on it. That's one layer. And this is an old Sparrows one right here. And you can see I, I have a lot of layers of heat shrink on it. Heat shrink is not that useful because it dampens feedback. That rubber always kind of kills off the vibrations. It feels good on your hands, but it kills the feedback. And I don't recommend using these unless you're just looking for something a little extra grip on. In that case, only use one layer. So there's our heat shrink. Uh, typically we have our woods and our acrylics. So our acrylics here are a whole bunch of different colors. These are just available in so many different colors. So, I mean, almost anything you're looking for, they'll have acrylics. And those are pin blanks. So here's also uh, like um, glow in the dark ones. And pin blanks are what people use to make their own custom homemade pins out of. So you know those really nice pins you see, that's what those are. They come in things like this and a honeycomb pattern. Just a whole bunch of different options with acrylics there. Our woods will go to last. The, the theme is though, you want something that is one eighth of an inch thick, like this right here. And so this is a wood, you can see it's one eighth of an inch thick. Same with these two ones I got over here as well. One eighth of an inch thick, and they're perfect. And the reason why I say that is, and I mean ideally to a half inch wide, what I say that is because that's the perfect thickness that when you cut your scales for one side of the pick there. So if you're lucky to find some just wood panels like these, these are perfect. I love these. Other things we can use are um, aluminum. So here's just a bag of it. You can find sheets of aluminum and you can cut off pieces, you know, that like that right there off each side there. You can also find just aluminum uh, bars that are already that thickness and perfect. So you can just trim it down, glue one to each side, shape it, and move on with life. Same with brass. And brass is really nice. Same with steel. You can find steel sometimes. It's the perfect thickness. Make yourself some steel handles. Um, other options are micarta, which you can get... Um, I think paper or woven micarta. I forget the options. I believe this one's paper, but you can see it gets really, really smooth and shiny there. You can make it look really nice. Some people have made some really nice micarta handles. Um, just basic stuff. Uh, popsicle sticks. Here's just leftover popsicle sticks that I had from um, my epoxy boxes. To mix it with and so I just took those and glued them on each side of this uh, this Peterson comb here and it works perfectly and it adds just a little bit more grip to it because this let's face it hand picks without handles are just way too thin they suck here's another option you can run into a random uh, instamorph these little beads you heat them up you mold them to the shape you want you can use that as handles what else we have here our woods let's go ahead and go on to our woods move this stuff out of the way can move woods down here and uh, focus a little bit more so just a whole bunch of different woods here here's our, our different black woods this is uh, African black wood ancient here we go 
ancient bog oak, which is really nice. I love it. This is like a curly, ma uh, curly maple, uh, purple heart, burls. Uh, this video, we will we'll be working with this burl right here. And you can see how nice that is in there. And a burl is, so when you see a tree with like a big knot on it, all that compressed knot, it makes this kind of thing. So that's a burl. Here are other examples of burls right here. So you can see the features in them just are really cool. There's mixtures of um, acrylics and woods that you can buy. And these turn out really cool. And just like the uh, other woods, you can find uh, knife scales that are already kind of almost the perfect uh, uh, thickness for them. Um, there's just a whole bunch of options. And for instance, uh, here's a buffalo, buffalo horn. I haven't made anything with this yet, so uh, I'm going to try this out. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of options with this kind of stuff here. But again, today we will be working with this, which is really nice. Um, one thing to mention as well, if you feel like mixing things, which I might mention later in the video as well, but worth mentioning now, you can get to be pretty creative. So here's one I've made. There's the African bog oak on the ends, there's brass in the middle, and there's that curly maple in the middle as well. But with this as well, <clears throat> it's really hard to grind down the metal on these without overheating it and just making it come apart. This pick was really hard. It kept falling apart. It was really hard to make. So I coated it with CA glue and decided to keep it for myself. It looks nice, but I mean, it was hard to make and it just didn't give me a lot of confidence, but it works. And I have one sitting here that I planned on making something out of as well. But just to be honest, when you're cutting the metal, it heats up a lot and it's just a really big pain to work with. So I haven't touched this since. So just something to keep in mind with that. You can mix woods and acrylics all day. Woods and micarta, acrylic and micarta, no problem. Just when you're mixing, <clears throat> when you're trying to glue metal to something, it doesn't work that well. Oh, other ideas as well. You have kitchen knives. You can grind these down. Here's your hand already. You can grind these down into little picks themselves. A lot of people use those. Another option is, um, let's say, this is our pick metal here. You can um, glue big zip ties to each side, just anything, really. Anything works. If, if you find like a piece of plastic to glue to each side, just glue to each side, big zip ties. The zip ties work because they got a little grip on them. But really, anything works. And I would highly recommend just finding <clears throat> almost anything if that's really what it comes down to to put on for a handle because for me personally Handles have greatly increased my picking ability and what I can pick and the comfort while picking without really hurting my hands So that increases the amount of time you can pick as well and gives you a higher chance of getting those Locks that take more time to pick There are a few different options for pick metal. We'll start with the cheapest we have these right here that I made, and they have epoxy handles with pins in them, but the metal for the picks themselves were made out of windshield wipers blades. So you can see the thin one on the bottom, how it actually goes through the handle there. So you can see how thin it was, and the top one was more of a thicker windshield wiper blade. So they're windshield wiper blades. We also have sparrows handles, or other pick handles. So whenever your pick is done, like this whenever it's all bent up and it's done you just cut the tip off there focus you cut the tip off right there and then you uh cut all this plastic dip off and you'll have this part of the metal left and that's perfect for making like a half tang pick see we can also just flat out buy the picks and make handles for them so here's just a bag of a whole bunch of different companies picks I have you can just make the handles for them uh, another option is to um, do what it's called uh, a feeler gauge so you can buy those in like almost kind of like pocket knife folding things and I'll put a picture of it right up here to give you an idea what I'm talking about you can also buy the actual size of metal that you're looking for in rolls. So this one right here is 25 thousandths. Up here is 19 thousandths with also 
a 16,000s in it because I just took that out of the box. So these come in rolls right here. And here's a 15,000s one. Um, these I found at McMaster.com if you're in the States. Uh, it's the only place I've been really to find it. This actually is 15,000s one I got on Amazon recently. And it's perfect because it's this nice little roll which you can control it unlike these where they can come undone. It's great. Um, sometimes the the pick baggies that you get from buying picks, I put the pieces I cut off from the metals in here so they're just ready for me next time I'm ready to make them. Always when you're storing your stuff, make sure you're watching, watching your moisture because you don't want it to rust. Um, if you want to do dimple picks, here's a good option. These are um, ejector pins. And that's what they look like. And you just shape this one end of it. And then this end right here, you stick into whatever handle you want to make for it. And um, these are pretty nice. I've only started working on one so far. You can see how far I got in the metal. But I haven't made a whole lot of my um, own dimple picks yet. I actually just like buying the um, multi-pick ones and modifying those. But here is the different types of metal and options for crafting the pick metal with. Oh, I guess just a rundown of sizes real quick as well. I find the 15,000s to be pretty thin itself, um, especially after polishing. Uh, it's hard to go thinner than that unless you really need to, need to for anything like that. Um, 16,000s I really like because when you're done polishing it down, it gets to be about the size of 15,000s, so I really like that. 19,000s, everybody knows that's uh, great, that's been the new size, it's been the hit lately, and it, it is, it's a perfect size. And of course, your 25,000s for those uh, keyways where they're just open, and why not have a stronger pick?